Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be covering the topic of how I'm gonna to plan to run gas from my stock fuel tank, ditching some of the electrical pump parts, using our nice stainless braided hose and routing the fuel up to the mechanical fuel pump that's then gonna feed the carburetor on top of our small block Chevy. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be using the stock fuel tank. And with our stock fuel tank, we're going to be routing the hose up to our mechanical fuel pump. No electric pump, mechanical fuel pump. And that's going to pump fuel to our carburetor. So what I got going on in here is actually, um, it's a stock fuel hanger. And what I did was I took the electrical stuff off and we replaced it with a submersible fuel hose from Deco. And from there, we have it running to our hard line i did make sure that it was the same length so it should be down to the bottom of the float the gas gauge should be pretty accurate i hope and we have it run into a hard line over to our an fitting that converts from the hard line to an an fitting and from there we're going to be using 8 an hose up to the mechanical fuel pump there's a few other trips and tricks we're going to be doing but first we'll take a look at the fuel hose and some of the fittings and stuff that we're going to be using to make this work Okay, so some of the things you're going to need is what you see in front of you here. And what we have here that's not shown is what we just showed you was the submersible fuel hose and the fitting that goes from the hard line to the AN fitting. And then you're going to need some stainless braided hose. As you can see, this is the rubber version and not the PTFE that has the plastic tubing stuff inside of the stainless braid. Um, this will be fine for now. Apparently the gas will break it down over time, but we'll just keep an eye on it and and hopefully by then we'll switch to a fuel cell and not have to worry about that. Aside from that, of course, I am going to be running a fuel filter. It's a fuel filter from Russell, 8AN on each side. We're going to be using some nice grade 8 hardware. You don't need the grade 8 hardware for this, but these will just to mount some of these clips here to keep the hose secured. And of course, you're going to need some various fittings to have... MPT to AN fittings, I have some straight AN hose fittings, I have 90s, and then I have some swivel fittings as well. And some various fittings I've just collected, thought that I might want to route it. And as you noticed on the other one, I cut the hose. It's not quite how I was wanting to run it originally, but that's how I'm going to make it work now. So aside from that, when we get to the mechanical fuel pump from there, we'll end up using this fuel pressure regulator. And we'll take a look at that when we get to the carburetor part after the fuel pump. But that's basically everything you're going to need to make this work. So let's jump in here and start getting this hose put together. Okay. So prepping for the hose, as you see, you're wondering why I stopped it here and have a fitting on it already. Well, that wasn't the intended purpose. The intended purpose was to take this and route it underneath the truck the other way and then under the cap and over to the mechanical fuel pump on the passenger side. When I changed my mind, I ended up having to buy another fitting. So the fitting that I purchased to be able to extend it over here and run some more hose was a union fitting. And what this will allow is for me to connect the two hose pieces from here. Once we get it on here, I had another piece of AN hose that I made. From there, we'll connect that to the other side of the union fitting. So basically this is just like an adapter. It's gonna allow you to connect two AN female ends. And then from there, we'll put our fuel filter on. We'll come back and tighten the stuff up once we get everything put on here and route it how we want it. From here, and now we have an extended line from there to there. And from here, we'll get another straight end and then we'll route it over to the passenger side frame rail. So. Let me get some clamps, we'll get this mounted up, and then we'll start on the other piece. Okay, so here we are. After the fuel pump, as you see, we have our 8AN line ran over to the passenger side frame rail. And from the frame rail, we have it to the front of the truck, but it's not finished yet. We'll touch base on that in a second. In the meantime, as you see what I did, I have a clamp, clamp, and then I have this heater hose on here, and the reason I have heater hose on here is right there on the frame where it transitions kind of like a not sharp bend is a potential rub through spot. And the reason I put that on there is since this is underneath the truck and the exhaust, I'm planning to run in, in this area 
on the side of the truck will be right below the fuel line. So cheap insurance. I believe that should keep it from rubbing. It's not really touching. I didn't even touch the frame until I actually um, put the heater hose on there. But just in case, I didn't want to have any fires or anything with gas dripping down on hot exhaust. So I did that over here as well. If you remember at the beginning of the video, we had the 8AN line laying across the fuel tank, coming out of the fuel tank. And I just basically did the same thing here and routed it around over to here where it's not touching anything. And then we have just the stainless braid. So that's what I did right there for the back part. We'll show you the whole setup here at the end of the video. But in the meantime, let's go to the front and get it from underneath the cab to the mechanical fuel pump. Okay, so we're in the home stretch now. As you see, we got the fuel line all the way up here to the mechanical fuel pump on the small block Chevy. And what we're gonna be doing now is making sure that we keep this fuel line away from any of the things that are going on up here. There's a lot of parts going on up here, heat, everything else. You got your starter, you got the control arms that'll be moving around, and you got the fender wall headers that we're gonna be running on this. They'll be real close and tucked up underneath this frame here. So we're gonna to wanna to keep this away from any moving parts or heat if we can. Now, obviously that's not completely possible. So what I'm gonna be doing is covering this with a sleeve that's actually made to keep the heat away from that. And we'll take a look at that here in a second. My plan is to run that on here and then mount it up here to keep it away from the control arms as far away from the starter as possible. And of course, we'll keep it away from the headers as well. And then we'll hook it up here and then we'll take a look at the whole setup. So let's go take a look at that fire sleeve and then we'll get to putting it on and get this wrapped up. Okay, so this fire sleeve that I was just telling you about is here in front of me. This is actually a six foot piece of this stuff. On the outside, it seems like it's like a rubberized type coating. Um, not sure what that is exactly. But on the inside here, you can see it has like that flame proof or fireproof insulation inside there. And it's supposed to be good to 500 degrees. And I believe it's up to 2000 for a flash period of time. Um, not specified. Don't quote me on that either. But um, on the research of that, it seemed like it was good for that amount. And this should work fine for my intended purpose. We're just going to cover a few sections of line with this stuff. This stuff that I did get, I got off Summit Racing from a place called Red Horse Performance. Um, I'd not heard of them until then. I got searching for this stuff, and that's when I found them. I'm guessing they make AN fittings and clamps and stuff like that as well. I'll have to do some more research on them, but it seems like for its intended purpose, this place had the best price, and through Summit, this stuff is not cheap. Um, it's probably one of the better places you're going to find the price for this stuff. This six foot piece was almost $50, if I'm not mistaken, 48 or 50 bucks. And that's actually a better price. And that's the reason I ended up selecting them as well for what this is, because some of the other brand names were a lot more expensive. But we'll go ahead and get this cut and we'll get this put on the hose and I'll show you how I'm going to put it on there. And then we'll get the fuel line hooked up to the mechanical fuel pump. Okay, so we got everything wrapped up finally, starting from the front of the cab here we put the heat sleeve on we ran it up to another clamp i made a little plate out of a scrap piece of metal and used two of the spare bolt holes on the motor mount that i wasn't using to make that plate mount for the clamp couldn't find a good spot and i didn't want to drill another hole in the frame and then from there we went to another heat sleeve to a 90 degree fitting and this 90 degree fitting is a swivel head so you can turn it different directions if it needs tightened up or anything you can tighten it up and then from there, it feeds into our mechanical fuel pump using a 90 degree 8 AN conversion fitting to an NPT fitting. Now that should get us all the fuel from the tank to the front of the fuel pump. Let's take a look at the whole path and we'll do a quick recap before we wrap this video up. Okay, recap of what we did time. So in the tank, submersible fuel hose to the hard line fitting that converts from the hard line to an 8 AN fitting and that's uh, 90 degrees and then we ran 8 AN line from the fuel tank all the way to the mechanical fuel pump we did put the heater hose on this to protect it from abrasions and any rubs that may rub through over time should last me as long as I have this mechanical fuel pump and stock fuel tank set up from there we ran it over to a union joint because I intended to run the hose differently so if you don't have to use that, you can make it longer and run it over there somewhere if you're planning on doing something similar. 
And then from there, I used a short piece of hose. And then from there, we went to an 8AN fuel filter. From there, we went to a straight AN fitting to a line. And then when we get to the frame, we put another piece of that heater hose on there and that should keep us from rubbing on the frame as well. It's not touching, like I said earlier in the video, um, it wasn't even touching the frame and it was sturdy until I put the thing on there and then it got tight, but it's just barely touching there. So let's jump under the truck and I'll show you the path to the front. Okay, so from there, you see I have it wrapped too close to under the frame, but it's not really touching either because I can get my fingers in between there. Sturdy. Snaked it around there, and then here is where we start the heater hose again because this is where the frame gets boxed in again. So we converted it instead of running it through the frame because there's no holes up there. We ended up going up around here around the cross member for the transmission here because our headers will come through here. And then we ran it up through the front of the cab that way. I hope you can see that. And underneath the cab. It's a nice little path through there to the front. Let's jump to the front and take a look at that. So from the firewall, we have the line wrapped in the fire sleeve that I just talked about earlier. And then from there, I snaked it around so it would touch the control arm. Fire arm should hopefully help keep the heat off of the AN line and fuel inside the hose. I think I'm gonna put it on the brake lines also. I have some smaller versions of that and talk about that in the other video. I'm going to use some of that on the transcore lines when I do those. From there, I made this little plate out of scrap piece of metal. I um, used the bolt holes on the motor mount to make a clamp mount or fire sleeve. And from the fire sleeve, we go to the 90 degree swivel 8AN hose fitting that goes into an 8AN to NPT fitting that's also swivel to our mechanical fuel pump. So that's how I did my fuel line. From the tank to the mechanical fuel pump up front. Hopefully this video helped anyone who may be watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments as always. That's going to conclude the video for today. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate everyone's continued support for the channel. And then some of the upcoming videos will be tackling the trans cooler. We're going to be doing the sway bar end links and bushings. Things like that. We've got to take the dash out, roll cage, pop the back window out, paint body. We've got a lot of stuff left on the list, but we're getting a little bit closer each time. If you're really curious about what I did just before we take off, check out one of these videos I'm about to put up here and it'll be on the fuel pump that we did a year or two ago. And you can see what I actually did inside of this a little more detailed. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.